four year old venison because that's all I can manage. I can't manage to get a deer worth my life, at least in the last few years. I've been picking away at my meat. That's all I got left. I'm gonna fire this up the best way possible. This is the show me your steak challenge. We're talking about men's mental health. Stick around. Hey guys, I'm sitting beside a four day old fire. Four days, the fire's been running for four days, but I don't wanna talk about the fire. And I also don't wanna talk about the small cabin up here, although I'm gonna show off some of our progress. It's up here, right there. But I wanna talk about today is show me your steak challenge. If you guys aren't familiar with it, basically a YouTuber will tag one YouTuber and then another YouTuber, that YouTuber will tag another YouTuber and it goes on and on. The idea is on the show me your steak challenge is to talk about men's mental health. It's a very important topic, very taboo. It's something that we as men struggle with because there's not very many outlets to deal with it. Basically, I'm gonna cook up a steak. We'll talk about some outlets and how we can come to address it. And at the end of it, I'm gonna tag some other YouTubers and we're gonna keep that ball rolling so we can get better help with what we're dealing with inside our own heads. And uh, so I'm gonna provide you with my take on it. So we're gonna get this fire stoked up. Um, obviously I got plenty of coals to work with. We'll rake some of these coals over and uh, I'm gonna cook a four year old venison because I can't manage to get another deer. So I'm gonna throw the venison on. I'm gonna show you how to cook the best venison, uh, the best way to cook venison a lot of people ruin wild game, but I'm gonna show you how to cook it the right way. 2014, I've shot deer since 2014, but uh, this is all I got left. I've been working my way backwards. Usually I keep this stuff for ground meat. I just never got around to grind it up. Um, you guys made comments about my old, eating old meat, but I've never been sick. And actually, you know what? This has actually been in the fridge for a month. I've intended to do this show me your steak challenge for a long time. I didn't get around to it, but that's not a necessarily a bad thing. This meat is going to be so tender. It's gonna be the best venison. Keep it at the right temperatures, less than five degrees. Keep it in your fridge. You got 10, 20, 30 days. That meat starts to break down and tenderize. I processed it down, took all that sinew out. Uh, so right now I've got a couple steaks and some chunks. So we're gonna throw that in the grill. But first we gotta warm up that grill to make sure it's nice and hot. We wanna throw this in hot oil and we wanna sear it. That's the big trick when it comes to cooking venison. Sear the outside, lock that moisture in and do not overcook. We're gonna season this first with some salt and pepper. It's all pre-mixed together. There's our chunks on the right hand side. And on the left side is what I managed to turn animal into a steak. So we got some oil here. I've already dumped a little bit in. I want to make sure that it gets soaked all the way through. I want to sear both sides real quick and that's pretty much it. We're going to add some butter after that. We've thrown some salt and pepper on there. It's all ready to go. We want to make sure when we drop this in here it pops. There we go. That's a hot sear. The secret that restaurants don't tell you, when they cook a steak, when they're done the steak, they put a chunk of butter on top, they let that melt in. If you wanna have excellent steak, that's all you need to do, is chuck a chunk of butter on there and let it melt in. Let it bathe in there, let it sit in there, marinate in there. It's gonna put all that moisture inside the meat. And you don't wanna overcook your venison or any wild meat. I really keep losing my bushcraft fork. Keep having to cut a new one. All right, let's dig into this, have a taste, see what it's like. Try to balance this on the log, cut it with my bushcraft fork. Thankfully I got a knife at least, that's a improvement over normal. Four years old and it's still good. And see, I didn't cook it long but it is cooked through. You don't have to cook it all the way through. Well, people give wild game a bad rap. Mostly it's because they don't treat it the same way they would a domesticated animal. You know, you would never hesitate to put barbecue sauce and seasonings and let it rest in the fridge. All those things that are done to domesticated animals before you eat them. But 
if you're not if you cook it right use butter salt pepper let it rest it's damn good it's not chewy at all i'm not creamy at all so the idea guys behind the show me your steak challenge is basically i was tagged by somebody and then i'm going to go off and tag other people generally you get tagged by one person and then you tag three others i'm going to do th something a little bit different i'm actually going to tag my entire tribe i have a tribe of people and what i'm advocating is that you get a tribe of people too all right now let's get down to business i'm going to grab a seat over here and let's have a chat all right guys i had a bunch of ideas hammered out in my head before i filmed this i don't know if i'm going to remember everything i've got so many things going on with the small cabin and in the woods um the wilderness living challenge season four which is running right now and not interrupt that but i think this is an important topic and it's something i can't keep pushing on so i was tagged by ta outdoors you guys know him he's got like almost 700,000 subscribers he's in the uk we skyped a couple uh a couple months ago touched base on what we thought the community uh, of youtube and and bushcraft and survival should look like and we had a lot of common themes that we agreed on and it surrounded the, the main topic was basically constructing a positive um, supportive network of people who were on the same page when it came to a lot of different things and uh, this this will wrap into men's mental health I, I promise you but the idea was to have to me anyway was to have a network of people that support you I and mean, if you go to the main section of my channel if you if you're on a, a desktop computer and you go to the main if you look on the right hand side it's uh, there's a column it's called friends of the beard and these are people that over time i've collaborated with either directly or indirectly um, people that have helped me and people that i've helped and and some of the people that i have on the friends of the beard are people that i've only helped i've never met them in person they've never directly helped me but because they asked me for advice and i was able to give them we developed a friendship and some of it was through YouTube. Well, most of it, most of it was through YouTube, for, for, as a matter of fact. Some of them needed help. Some of them were getting demonetized. Some of them were very frustrated um, by what was happening on YouTube, and I offered them advice. Um, one of the ones I'm going to shout out right now is Joseph uh, Carter, the Mink Man. So I'm, I'm, I'm sending that off to you as a tag. Joseph, I want you to go out and cook yourself a steak and talk about mine's mental health. So as my first, just because it's tying in with what I'm talking about right now. So Joseph came to me with a with a with a problem, and he said, I'm, "I want to give up YouTube." And I said, "No." And I said, "You have to just do it a little bit differently." He went from 100,000 subscribers to I think he's almost 400,000 subscribers, quadrupled the number of subscribers. He's built up a great fan base of people that are supporting what he's doing, and he's doing a good service, a good positive service. Um, so what we talked about was how we could deliver that topic to people that would make it a lot more palatable to them um and he has a family to support he's he's got a daughter and he's got a wife and that makes him be a more valuable person um rather than struggling through something and i could have left him struggle i could have cast joseph aside and said no i don't want to help you because i want that for me i want to take so part of be being a, a productive healthy man is the ability to take but also give I mean, if you're a man you don't take, you have nothing to offer anybody else. And you don't necessarily have to take something from another person. You could take something from the environment, which is what we're doing right now. We're taking logs from the environment and we're producing a small cabin in the woods. I'm doing that with my brother, so I'm fostering a positive relationship with him. And we're working through problems that are not necessarily internal, but they end up solving internal problems. When you produce something from nature, whether it be a meal, or a few dollars or if you're just going out in the environment and your work and you're producing something of value for your family you're taking from the environment to give but if you don't take you can't give and that's what men are designed to do take and give i know 
a lot of people have struggled with taking an animal to give it to your family, but that's what men were designed to do, to solve real life problems, to produce things from the environment so that we can give them to people, to our families and our communities. If we don't take, we can't give. I'm coaching hockey right now. So that's another example of how I'm able to improve my own mental health. You know, I can't play hockey at the same level I used to play. I used to play AAA rep hockey. I can't do that anymore. But I still play beer league hockey, pick up hockey, and I go out and I work my butt off to score a bunch of goals that nobody's ever going to report. But I'm, I'm competing against other men. I'm taking for myself in that case. But I'm also setting up passes and passing plays, and I'm working hard for my team. And that's something that comes back into my, my, my well-being. I stay up late. I'm up uh, 12.30. I'm off the ice. 11.30, 12.30. I'm still playing hockey in my own mind. And, you know, by the end of it, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted the next day. But I go from, you know, being relaxed sometimes to being exhausted. And the next day, I'm uh, tired. I'm going through a range of uh, feelings and emotions and also... Um, you know, I'm going from, from rested to tired to rested and rebuilding. So I'm destroying my body, rebuilding, and I'm growing. I'm getting better at scoring goals and get better at stick handling, even in my 40s. There's no reason you need to stop developing. You can have different hobbies and stack on those hobbies and grow and get tired of something, move on to something else. A couple years ago, I was into baseball and I was really into baseball. I was bodybuilding for baseball. I wanted to get really big because my goal was to smash the ball over the fence. I never, I never accomplished it. And then I got tired of baseball. I ended up, you know, back playing hockey again because I, I reached a plateau where I couldn't get any better than that. I would hit in the in the park home runs, um, you know, best of the team kind of thing. And I kind of reached my peak, and so it became bored, boring to me. But you can develop hobbies that will improve your mental health as well. You know, people think they get kind of stuck in, in the headspace, but they're really, do you, do you know many kids that have um, pr uh, mental health issues, like young kids especially? I mean, there's, there's some, but because kids are growing and developing and learning new things all the time, they're always moving forward. They're never regressing and moving backwards. I think as men, if we get into a position where we start regressing, we're having problems. You know, we're, st we're starting to shrink. And, the, and the, yeah, there's a natural shrinkage you, that happens as you get older. You know, you can't do what you could do before. But that doesn't. Ha they don't have to be physical. They can be. They can be mental challenges too. You know, crossword puzzles, or uh, or reading a book, or studying a topic, learning something about something, or coaching. Like I said, you can go. I mean, I get it so much pride. It's giving me shivers right now. Uh, taking my boys out to play hockey. They're my boys. They're my little men. They're my soldiers. I sent them out on the ice and we're, we're in a battle. And it's a constructive thing for, for young boys and men to compete. You know, when I play pickup hockey, I still compete. You know, when I'm making these YouTube videos, I'm competing. I'm not trying to destroy other people. I'm competing against myself a lot of the times. You can do that through strength building, um, running, uh, anything. There's so many different ways that you can accelerate uh, and move forward and build yourself up over time without um, regressing. You don't have to build a small cabin in the woods at all. There's no reason for it. But if we sit around on our butts, then we start to shrink, right? So we always need a project. You need a project in your life. If you don't have a project in your life, you don't have something you're working on or working toward, then your life has no purpose. Um, I've tried to talk about this a few times. I uh, I was a full-time stay-at-home dad um, when my son was two years old, three years old, four years old. I had him full-time every day, um, and that was really tough. And I've spoken about gender roles before, and I think every time I've tried to talk about this, I've deleted it because it just never came out the right way. You know, I always get in trouble when I talk about gender roles, and but since we're talking to men about men, I'm going to call this my safe space right now. I'm going to use some of those bored terms. And my thoughts and feelings about this are my thoughts and feelings about this. You can disagree all you want, but I'm going to tell you what I think helps me with my mental health. And that's, it's really to have, uh, to explore and be more masculine 
and do masculine things. And when I was that stay-at-home dad, I enjoyed it. I did it really well. I taught my son 200 signs through baby sign language before he could speak. We were, we were conversing with each other um, using sign language. Just gonna grab a seat here. So I taught my son 200 signs through baby sign language so I could communicate with him because that's something that men need, right? I mean, it's not enough for us to just hang around with small babies and get our fill. We, we want to interact with our children. And so that was way too early in my son's life for me to fully enjoy what was happening with him. I truly believe that men should do male things. Um, I had anxiety at the time and I would tell my mom, you know, I feel anxious and she'd be like, what's the problem? And I'd try to say, well, I don't know. I just feel anxious all the time. I just feel anxious when I'm taking care of my son. I feel anxious. I don't feel well. And that manifested itself in a lot of physical pain too um, over time, over the years of doing it. You know, I developed elbow, chronic elbow pain, knee pain, back pain. And it wasn't like really severe pain, it just, or debilitating pain, it was just pain. And I had no mechanism of dealing with it because I guess my body felt that I wasn't being very productive. I wasn't doing male things. I wasn't hunting, I wasn't going outdoors. I wasn't building or constructing, you know, I was, I was building a person, yes, but I fundamentally believe at the time that my biology was not designed to do that. And it, but it took a long time for me to realize that because the culture, me growing up was all about being a good dad, you know, ad nauseum to be a good dad, be a good dad, be a good dad and take care of kids. And you know, if you, if you marry a single mom, that's good. Take care of their kids too. And all these things, I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm saying, but full-time, being a full-time uh, man with a child, it was, it was not, it was not pleasurable. I, I, I mean, I did a good job. I took pleasure in doing it, but it was not, my body just completely rejected it. And then when, when I kind of started to come out of it, when my son was in school full-time, at least every other day, then I started feeling better. And then when he went full-time, it probably took about a year. And then I felt started really feeling good. And I started lifting weights again. I started going back out hunting, you know, fishing, camping and all that stuff. And then I just went full tilt. And that's pretty much when I started the YouTube channel going out full tilt. Um, and then I started doing some research or I came across an article saying that your testosterone drops dramatically after your first child. If you take care of a child, your testosterone drops even more. And if you hear a baby cry, and that baby's your responsibility, your testosterone goes through the floor. So it's something on the order of your testosterone drops about 50% when you have a baby. And it stays there forever. Um, it rebounds slightly, but it always stays lower. It never returns back to the to ordinary. I'm like, this, is makes, this makes sense because I don't feel well. I just don't feel well. So that's kind of an environmental circumstance where you don't feel well. Um, and that's just because I wasn't doing man stuff. So you can imagine like not doing man stuff makes you feel uh, anxiety and that's a pretty strong thing. It makes you weak. You start to lose, lose muscle mass. You, your beard doesn't grow very well anymore. And that's a good indicator that you got low T if your beard doesn't grow very fast. Um, you know, secondary uh, sexual characteristics and all that stuff. Biology. It's biology guys, it's biology. So I think what you need for good mental health is to have uh, a maleness about you. If you're a man, you need to have male projects. You need to do man stuff. I really sincerely believe that. Um, there are, of course, other issues at play um, when people, when men aren't feeling well and some of them are chemical. Do I advocate that men should talk to somebody? I mean, that's, that's a thing that, that, that's been mentioned by almost everybody who's done the Show Me Your Steak Challenge. Talk to somebody. I don't necessarily think you should talk to anybody. The reason being because when I was feeling not well, I talked to people. I, uh, and it didn't help me. Not one bit. We, we have a thing, men have a thing, it's called reticent. Men are res reticent. Young boys are reticent. You can't get a boy to talk to you about their feelings and emotions. You can't. You can try. You won't be successful doing it. I mean, there's an exception. There's an exception. If you're working with a boy 
and you're building something or you're going for a long walk, he will open up to you because he'll start to trust you. But it's only when you're doing something, when you have a shared project or a shared goal or you're physically active, they'll open up to you. They will. But by nature, boys are reticent. We are reticent. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sharing your feelings is a big risk for men because there's very little reward in doing so. It's a complete opposite with women. If women, if you if you put a woman on the street and you may, and she cries, just as an experiment, people will come in and try to fix her problems. If you do that with a man, not the same reaction. It's not. We talk about patriarchy a lot and throw that term around. There's no such thing as patriarchy. There isn't. There's, there's a such thing as shared goals, teamwork, um, camaraderie, shared goals, all that stuff. There's a such thing as that. You can have a common goal with a lot of people, and that's why I talk about having a tribe. Produce a tribe. Make yourself a tribe. Make shared goals together, that some things that, things that you can work on together. And then you'll have that space where everything's going to fix itself naturally. If you don't have a community of people with shared interests, you gotta find one. And maybe you're not social to begin with, that's okay. You can find other ways to connect with people, even online, or you can have an individual project that you're working on by yourself. So the Show Me Your Steak Challenge, uh, I've already passed it off to Joseph Carter. Uh, I'm gonna remind you I was tagged by TA Outdoors. Um, I wanna tag everybody in my friends list uh, Jeremy, one wild crafter. I'm gonna throw it out to you, buddy. Um, you've been an excellent supporter of me and my projects, um, and I hope, obviously, teaming up with me has has produced uh, better mental health for you, too. And I th I think it has. We've we've grown together in the last couple of years, and we've produced some really great things, and we've had some excellent adventures. And you guys should know Jeremy by now. One wild crafter, go guys, go give him a sub. sub. Adam Craig Outdoors, I want to shout you out. Obviously, whenever I've needed you for trapping, you've been there, buddy. So, uh, and I'm thankful for it. And I, I hope uh, I've conveyed that. I've I've sent messages to you explicitly saying I'm thankful for what you've done because you step in when I need you, and and that's fantastic. So I'm going to shout you out too. Um, Aaron Nelson, I want to shout you out. Uh, we've never collaborated in person, but you know. I would for sure. Aaron's one of the guys who uh, bounces ideas off me and is always supportive. He's always a, one of the first ones in there saying, hey, that's awesome. Um, calls our family the alpha family, but uh, obviously that's not the case. We're just a bunch of people just like everybody else. So um, Aaron Nelson, I want you to go out and uh, show me your steak and, and uh, share your thoughts. You showed me out before and I, and I wasn't able to do it, but you asked um, what kind of music do you listen to? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill you in right now. I, I listen to techno music. <laughs> Dance music, techno, yeah. I you know it's it's the weirdest thing in the world probably to hear, but yeah, that's my that's my style of music. Um, you know, the raver days, that was that was great in university. So yeah, that's uh that's a little bit of a twist probably what you used to, but I mean that's it's like they have a balance in your life, right? You don't have to be all nature, nature, nature. People that want to go off in the woods and, and live there forever. No man, not for me. I, I love all the things in, in life and, and balancing them is the is a real big challenge, you know. When you go off on an adventure and you come back and you see your family, that's awesome, you know. You see your family every day, like whatever. You miss your family for a week or two, that's awesome when you come back. You miss your food for a week or two, you come back, you have food. Again, food, man, it's food. I still think my breakfast tastes the best thing in the world because I've done without. So that's another way you can challenge yourself. You, you can do fasting challenges. You can do uh, you know these little survival challenges. You go put a wild meal together. Those are all things that are gonna work wonders for your mental health. And when you get down in your rut, just scrape your butt off. Scrape, just put one foot in front of the other. Just do it. It's hard part is just doing it. Once you're doing it and it's in motion, it's so easy. You know, building the small cabin, we're just like push, 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 and we get just so tedious and hard. Sometimes we get stuck one foot in front of the other, and look what we've managed to build. Fantastic. And I'm building this with my brother and my dad. Men, men are builders, we're creators. I realize now that this video is probably going to be very long, but I don't really care because like I said, it's an important topic. I'm going to reach outside my circle for this one. I'm going to, I want to tag AP Bassing, Alex Peric, Peric, yeah, P-E-R-I-C, Peric, Alex Peric. He, um, he mostly runs a fishing channel and he's kind of got into hunting, 
but uh, I've kind of taken a liking to his videos. So I actually, in the evenings, will actually sit and watch his videos when he puts them out. So, and we've chatted uh, over email. We've almost scheduled a phone call. Um, I think we probably end up collaborating at some point. So Alex, uh, show me your steak, buddy. And uh, let's collaborate sometime. I think, uh, I think we'd have a blast with you and your crew and we'll, we'll find some fun things to do, some fun little challenges. And uh, appreciate the humor. I appreciate that uh, you've got a good tribe uh, going there too and you guys have some really great chemistry. So you guys want to go check out Alex Perrick AP Bassing. Give him a shout and let him know that he's been tagged. He's outside of my current tribe circle, but you never know, he, might, he may enter it at some point. The other day I was talking to CL outside um, Carl, he's uh, brothers with Doug outside. Um, he was saying he was going to tag me and I said, go ahead and tag me. Um, even though I've already been tagged by TA Outdoors, I don't mind getting a second tag. So, um, I'm going to toss that back. You guys want to go check out Carl, uh, CL outside. Oh, I'm going to link all this in the description. You'll have an easy time finding all these people, my tribe. So, uh, we've gone back and forth a few times and, uh, and, uh, I think he follows the channel because we have common interests, the hunting and the fishing. So. Yeah, go check out Carl. Vision Quest Outdoors, Jay. I know Jay will go out and cook a steak. He loves going outside. He's uh, really busy now. He's the one who makes all the stone tools for me. Uh, dude, um, he's listened endlessly about all the things I'm working on. Uh, troubles, my troubles with YouTube and just listening and helping me work through them. Um, he doesn't have a big channel, but uh, he's always good to bounce an idea off of and speculate with me on things that might work and might not work. And of course, he's built all those stone knives, the stone arrows, um, all that good stuff. So yeah, go check out uh, J Vision Quest Outdoors. Uh, Ray Fletcher uh, made me a bow and I've been intending to use it. I just don't have any time. So go check out Ray. Ray, you've been tagged. J uh, Valenti, I'm mentioning you guys at the same time because you guys are both my primitive people. So you guys have been tagged. I'm tagging everybody. I'm tagging my whole tribe. Zach Fowler, I want to tag, but I know he's busy right now because he's on his 30 day survival challenge in Texas. So he's going to put out, he's actually going to put out our survival videos after he finishes up his survival challenge out in Texas. So uh, you guys check out Zach Fowler and he's been tagged. I don't know if you'll have time to do it. That's why he kind of at the bottom. I had so many ideas and thoughts uh, before I came out here that I really wanted to talk about. I should have wrote them all down. Um, if you're really hurting, if you're really hurting, I would reach out, reach out and talk to somebody if you're really hurting. If you're going to do something stupid, like make it your last day on the planet, then let somebody know. There was actually somebody, and I wish I had the name on me right now, but um, in the community section, he said, I want to kill myself. This is my last day or whatever. And I said, what are you, are you serious? I didn't actually ask him if he was serious, but I... I treated it as if he, if he was being serious and um, I said, don't do it. I said, just wait a couple of days, <laughs> you know, don't do it. So it, we, when you're really low, I mean, I was low, I was low in high school. I was low, uh, but it passed and look at the life I've been able to create for myself. I did this for myself. Nobody helped me. And that's where your mental health comes from is you creating something. And those emotions will pass. Those hard times will pass. They will pass. Emotions never last. Um, even people who are depressed, you know, they can get into a depression for a very long time, but it eventually it passes, it goes away. That's the, that's the fact of it. If life gets better, your troubles will dissipate. Um, so yes, if you're having a really hard time, 100% talk to somebody and mention that you're having problems in saying it's I mean, I'm thinking about this is my last day you know and I would advise that you talk to other men hopefully you have somebody even talk to somebody anonymously there's all sorts of resources I'll provide some in the description just talk to those hotlines and having somebody listen to you because you don't have somebody to listen to who who who's on your tribe can help it it really can help um do i advise that you spill your guts to your wife or your girlfriend i don't actually i don't because i've i've had experiences with that and i don't think women know what to do with that information you know i i talked to my mom about it she was sympathetic but she didn't know what to do um I 
I didn't really talk to other men about it, but I shared kind of my research and my facts about what I thought was the problem and how, you know, taking care of a small child wasn't in our DNA and more to bounce those ideas off them to see what they thought. And maybe to share a little bit of information if, in case they were contemplating doing it. I don't know if that helped. I think, I think our bodies are meant to do stuff. And I think the more things that we do with our bodies, our brains, the better we feel. You know, being out in nature is obviously something that can help a lot if you're having troubles uh, being active. Um, you know, I felt, I feel a lot better doing these little projects and even suffering. Suffering can be a positive boost to your mental health. Um, physically suffering and that can help your mental suffering too because uh, you're feeling something again it's not anguish it's not it's not up here it's here it's your body aching and hurting you know we were meant and designed by evolution to create to destroy and build and part of what we're doing out here with the cabin is destroying and building and if you the further you get away from what you're naturally inclined to do and designed by nature to do the worse you're going to feel it's just as simple as that. So I'm gonna wrap things up here. I think I've covered most of the topics I wanted to cover. Uh, show me your state, guys. I'm gonna all your all the tags are gonna be down in the description so you guys can check it out. And I want you to support the people that support me, and just go toss them a sub. I don't maybe you don't have time to watch everybody that I've mentioned, but go up there, just hit the subscribe to all the all the people and know that there are those are people that help me out you know they help me with my channel they help me with what's going on up here and uh yeah we're collaborating we're a community here so i hope that helped guys uh, i know it's probably going to be very long and but uh people there's people out there that are that can help you so i'm going to get back to work here work on my physical and mental health and well-being but uh, if you're having problems talk to somebody anybody just don't act on it let it pass cheers guys so what's that what do you see holden a mouse Good. what are you gonna do with the mouse you're gonna eat the mouse <laughs> that's silly <laughs> you know how silly it is say eat Mouse. Ew. You don't eat a mouse. Dada. Yes, Dada. What? Eat. Eat what? Eat what? The mouse? Ew, gross. Dada, eat the mouse. Hold it. Hold it. Eat the mouse. Now be gentle with it. Ew, you can't eat the mouse. You're silly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what Dada does with the mouse on the computer? You just move it around randomly? <laughs> randomly? Did you say randomly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it making the computer move? Wow. <laughs>